my, my question is, to gentlemen, to everybody. Um, you have a family. You see one of your relatives or multitudes of your relatives get killed. And you want safety for your family. And to cross the border is the only refuge that you have. So when you cross that border with this fear in your in your in your in yourself and in your family, you want to bring them to safety. Is it a crime? No. The reason for that is all countries have programs for refugee status. That's what they get investigated for. The people that you're describing are the people that really need to have the safety to come here. Now they're standing out with refugees. When they get here, they have to find some way of supporting themselves, having a job. Uh, let me give you an example of what went on the, the swift meat packing uh, up there in uh, Logan. The fact that you had uh, a document mill running and uh, providing illegal aliens with identification. When they broke that two years ago, uh, basically the primary thing that the federal government was going after was the document mill. But it forced a lot of the illegal immigrants out. The people that came and replaced them were refugees. And I think these were Burmese refugees that came in and uh, started back up there. And there's different accounts of that throughout different newspapers in the United States. So the, 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 this is where the refugees come in. They, in my opinion, uh, deserve to have uh, all the benefits that they can possibly get because they put their lives out at risk. Some of them, like the uh, Iraqis, uh, have fought for us. Put, literally put their lives at, at risk, uh, their families at risk, but they need to be here. There's no argument from me as to the fact that the refugees have to be here. Uh, the other part too is, is when you have other countries uh, being poor, you know, when people think of this issue as just a Mexican uh, issue, it's not. Uh, you got people coming in from uh, Defer, from Chad, war-torn countries. You've got people coming in from Ukraine, and this is, again, they have to have this protection. I, it, to whatever extent that he's, uh, you know, said that you need to have protection for uh, the refugees, for those fleeing war torn uh, countries, I completely agree uh, with the gentleman to my left. But there's something to keep in mind, and that's Juarez looks a lot like Fallujah, and that Chiapas looks a lot like Darfur, and Colombia looks a lot like Sudan. So in order to qualify this to just the government legal status, I mean, you can look at Colombia. Colombia I'm incredibly familiar with. Uh, it's called Plan Colombia. Uh, basically, it was a plan to deforest uh, as in towns and to destroy what they saw as evil insurgents and millions upon millions have been displaced. But the leadership of Colombia is also the drug dealers. So none of these people have an opportunity to get the refugee programs. So what, am I, what, what, what is any thinking moral human being to say to these people who are fleeing devastation? For me it's welcome. Follow very quickly given that we spent eight billion dollars and we are attempting to build six military bases in Colombia by, I'm sorry. And we would do well to remember that of the four horsemen of the apocalypse, war is certainly the clearest, but famine is the most pervasive. Um. Why do so many people 
want to come here, and why haven't you left yet? That's a great question. So, uh, there's two things to keep in mind. Uh, the Monroe Doctrine, uh, Manifest Destiny, uh, World War I, World War II, in which the United States emerged as the world police and the superpower. And this comes with perks. For example, one of the perks is you can take the resources of other countries and you get rich. And the United States has done a very good job of doing that. From Korea to Grenada to uh, Chile to Guatemala to Colombia to Mexico. Why do people come here? I, I'm getting to that. Uh, if you are in a poverty-stricken area, you go where there are resources. It doesn't entail that the resources there are there because of some moral reason. The fact that people are willing to be slaves in a plantation is not an argument for plantations. Now, actually, the simple reason why I haven't left yet is because I actually did go to Nepal and talk to people struggling against, in this case, Indian imperialism. So if I was there, I'd be talking about India. And they said the best thing you can do is you come to the United States and make sure that they don't strangle our revolution. Now, Barack Obama just gave an, uh, the sixth largest arms deal uh, in history, so I'm obviously not doing a good job. But if you're asking why I didn't leave, it's because here we are in the most dangerous area that does the most to attack the people's movements around the world, just look at Egypt, and it's our obligation to stop our government from carrying out immoral acts in our name. No, I just I just like to say that powers have acted in their self-interest throughout the history of time. And were any country in the position of the United States, I don't care where on the planet they're located, they would probably behave in much the same fashion that the United States has. So to point out, point the finger at the United States in, in such a fashion, in such a declamatory fashion, and criticize the, the polity of it, and by extension, the citizens of it, although you did distinguish, uh, I think it's just, uh, just, just wrong, in my view, and it's errant, shows an errant type of thinking. Just to clarify, the question should the question shouldn't last any longer than thirty seconds. The answers are limited to a minute and thirty seconds. If you write a question on, the, on an index card, that'll usually keep you within the time limit. <laughs>